helps you. All right, we are now recording. And um, if you will present just what you have to say about traditional Chinese medicine regarding eczema and TSW. Yeah, sure. Um, so as, <clears throat> excuse me, as Kelly mentioned, I mean, I'm, I was a sufferer as well at one point in time and, you know, just had a really, really bad stint of it. I mean, I not only had eczema, but I also had allergies. I had asthma. I had the trifecta basically. And it was a really, really, um, you know, tough life. Um, it took up all of my time to manage all of those symptoms. And I think at the worst part of it, I was on as many as nine medications all at the same time. And I remember thinking to myself, like, there's got to be a better way um, because this is just way too much to have to manage all the time. And it was taking up all my time. And of course, you know, it was really taking a toll on my self-esteem and whatnot. Um, so I started looking at alternative care and um, I came across a Chinese medicine doctor. And when I told him I had all these issues, he seemed like really confident that he could help me. And I thought that was really interesting because everyone I had talked to up until then was like, well, we can manage this, or maybe we can like make this not so bad, but you're probably going to have this for the rest of your life. Um, but he was pretty confident that he was going to be able to like cure it. And sure enough, after taking herbs for a number of months, my, um, my eczema actually went away, my asthma went away, and a lot of my allergies went away. The one allergy I kept was my peanut allergy, but that's okay. Um, that's a win still. Um, and I was amazed. I was absolutely amazed that I got my life back, right? Because as you all know, um, you spend so much of your time just managing this that when you actually don't have to do it anymore, it's incredibly profound. So when that happened, I realized that more people need to have this kind of medicine and that I really wanted to learn how to do it so that it could help other people like myself. So as Kelly mentioned, I went back to school. I um, got a degree. I went and did additional studies in uh, dermatology just so that I could treat this specifically. And um, now I have a practice. So today what I'm gonna do is talk to you specifically about how Chinese medicine approaches TSW and RSS, um, since so many of you guys are um, suffering from that. And um, you know, as far as Chinese medicine goes, we have records that estimate that it was around like two, 3,000 years ago. But to be really honest with you, it probably existed way before that. It's just that a lot of it was based on oral history at that time. And the only uh, you know, actual records that we have start appearing like two, 3,000 years ago. And you know, obviously this is before we had pencils and pens and, and paper and then we could add all that kind of stuff. So I actually believe it's been around a lot longer than that. So anyway, how can an ancient medicine, right, that started way back then, have a solution for something like TSW and RSS when those conditions really haven't happened until the advent of steroids, which was basically the 1950s, right? So how is it possible that they have a solution for that, right? And that's a valid question. Um, the short answer is that we look at things a lot differently than Western medicine. And Chinese medicine actually diagnoses and treats based on a cluster of symptoms, which they call patterns. And then there happens to be a pattern that sounds a lot like TSW and um, RSS. And the herbs that we actually use to treat those particular symptoms actually work on TSW and RSS. So let me take a, a little deeper look and go a little backtrack and kind of explain to you what I mean by pattern, because that's not something that we talk about a lot in Western medicine. Um, the Chinese realized that every single skin condition actually happens for a variety of reasons, okay? So every single reason actually brings with it a cluster of symptoms, and they're different. And each of these clusters they call a pattern. So for example, in the Western world, we have a condition called eczema, and it is a condition that's treated as one condition, right? But in Chinese medicine, we actually look at eczema and say, no, there's actually seven different reasons why this happens. And therefore there's seven different patterns. And therefore we have to treat based on what that pattern is. 
Um, most skin conditions, as far as the Chinese are concerned, typically have either two to nine patterns. And so nothing is looked at as just being one condition. And as a result of that, um, inflammatory skin conditions typically have one pattern that's in common. And that's the one that they call toxic heat pattern. So what's that? Um, so let me give you a, a Western definition of the cluster of symptoms that sort of fall into toxic heat syndrome or toxic heat pattern. And you tell me if this sounds familiar to you. Um, the pattern symptoms usually include rapidly evolving lesions that occur widespread or all over the body. Typically, there's a lot of erythema. Um, typically, the person, when they touch their skin, feels really hot but inside they feel really cold and lots of times they have chills. Um, lots of times when people go to touch their skin and put a little pressure on it, they can actually make it turn white. Um, typically the skin produces a white powdery scale. Um, a lot of times these same people have swelling in their ankles, some edema. Um, typically they have darker urine and lots of times it smells a lot differently than normal. Um, the other thing that the Chinese recognized is that um, they have emotional symptoms as well. Unlike the Western way of looking at disease, we always think of people having a condition and then they react to it with an emotion. But in Chinese medicine, we actually say no, the emotions are actually part of the symptoms. And in the toxic heat pattern, the symptoms also include things like irritation, um, agitation, restlessness, insomnia. And if the condition continues to move on and it's chronic and it goes on for a really long time, these people start to exhibit lassitude. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Because you're so spent from trying to fight this um, syndrome for so long. So you don't have to have every single symptom in order to fit into the toxic heat pattern. But if you have a lot of them, chances are pretty good that you have it. And I think you'll agree with me that TSW and RSS fit a lot of these symptoms, if not all of them. So it's a really good um, definition of it. So how exactly does toxic heat happen, right? So if you look at your body and you think of it in terms of you always have some amount of heat that's going on inside, right? And if you have healthy skin, you typically are able to vent that heat through your pores, or you can actually turn on your quote unquote sprinkler system, which is your, your sweating, right? If you sweat, you're able to cool your body, you're able to change the temperature of your body, and you're able to maintain the right temperature, right? But what happens is when you have some amount of dysfunction in your body, um, and the heat continues to grow and you are unable to vent this heat or unable to turn on or, or sweat in order to get that heat out, then what happens is the heat kind of gets constrained in your body. It has nowhere to go. So if you have more heat, it just keeps on building and building and building until it's like really, really intense. And then it starts to do some damage to your body. Um, that damage can be to your skin barrier, it can be to other systems in your body, um, depending on how strong it is and how long it goes on for. So one of the ways that I best describe it is through an analogy. And if you think of a fire and a plot, and inside the pot is water, you can see that if you turn, if you the fire is really, really strong, eventually the water inside of the pot's going to start boiling, right? Now, if the fire continues to be intense and gets stronger, then that water is gonna to start to evaporate, right? And if that fire continues to get hotter and hotter and hotter and all the water starts to evaporate, you're left with a pot which now starts to scorch, right? And if that starts to scorch, then the fire is going to get even bigger, right? Okay, so, if you think of the fire as the heat that's inside of your body and the pot as your skin system as well as your body system, and then the water inside as the fluids that are circulating inside of your body, then you can understand like the correlation between 
as the hot as the fire gets hotter and hotter, how it actually um, damages or affects or impacts you know the pot and the water, right? So that's basically how it all starts, and that's how toxic heat pattern begins. And it's just more and more of this over time, um, and it just starts to you know cause all these problems. So the way that Chinese medicine actually fact is they use uh, herbal medicine. And so herbal medicine came about because the Chinese realized that all these different herbs, whether they come from the animal kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, or the mineral kingdom, they all somehow address different conditions or different problems in our body. And so they took all of these herbs and they kind of categorized them based on all the different things that they do. And what they realized with toxic heat pattern is that there were three different uh, categories of herbs that really helped to alleviate the toxic heat. And so the first one um, is a set of herbs that kind of deal with more superficial toxic heat. And what I mean by that is um, the symptoms would be something like you have sudden rashes that occur with a fever, you have um, erythema that's kind of painful, it's kind of swollen, you have um, well-defined lesions, you probably have a little bit of yellow brown crusting with a little bit of fluid. The second set of herbs, they saw that it actually goes a little bit deeper. And so this set of herbs, they, they coined um, the deeper toxic heat herbs. And these herbs actually handle things where the lesions have become a little bit more widespread in the body. Um, you typically have this heat sensation that's a lot more intense in the afternoon and usually at night. Um, and as a result of that, you probably have a lot of tr trouble sleeping. You probably are incredibly irritable, uh, very restless. Um, you probably have this really intense thirst, but for some reason you have no desire to drink anything. Um, the other thing is you probably have like really dark urine or at least darker than usual. And the last group of herbs, um, they realized that, you know, as this heat continues, that it becomes deeper and deeper and it becomes more chronic and it becomes this like unrelenting heat that just has been going on and on and on for a while, um, typically does some amount of damage to other parts of your system, right? and also is probably gonna take your skin to an even deeper level of damage. And so these herbs actually take care of symptoms like um, sores that don't heal, um, ulcers and scars that typically have like some kind of ooze coming out of them, like maybe a, a, um, a clear fluid or maybe like a yellow straw colored fluid. Um, you also probably start to have some digestive issues at this point because the damage is starting to go into, you know, deeper and deeper layers of your system. So as you can see, um, the Chinese really look at not just the fact that you have inflammation or that you have infection or that you have a skin barrier issue. They really look at, well, how intense are all of these different things, all these different factors that are going on inside of you? And to what degree has it infiltrated your system? And then they pick ingredients that sort of um, address all of those different things. The other thing that they realized is that the formula has to constantly change to meet the needs of where your skin is and as you heal. So when you put all these ingredients together into a formula, um, you know, you get one set when you first start, but as you get a little bit better, like you're going to need different things. So, Let's see, if we go back to that analogy of the fire, the pot, the water, if at the first we're trying to extinguish the fire, we're using all those, you know, really deep heat toxin kind of herbs, and then the fire goes away, right? But now we've got to actually rebuild that pot. And now we've got to replenish those fluids that are inside the pot, right? Well, we need completely different herbs for that than the ones that we're actually putting out the fire, right? So we have to constantly change and we constantly have to address things based on that particular person. Um, one of the things that Chinese medicine does really well is looking at each person as an individual. 
And some people's constitution will be really strong at the time that you meet with an herbalist. And some of them might be really worn down from like trying to fight this for a really long time. Um, some people have sensitivities. And so there might be some herbs that, you know, they do better with and some not so good. And we have to kind of play with that. And then, you know, there's also times where we just have to figure out like what makes sense for you at every single step of the way. So your herbal formula is always going to be changing. Um, so in that same vein, it doesn't really matter at what point in your healing, um, your healing process you are in by the time you come to an herbalist. Like when Kelly came to me, as she mentioned already, um, she was kind of at the tail end of her RSS. I think the most frustrating parts that she had gone through had already happened. And now it was like, you know, towards the end. But I've also dealt with people who are starting at the beginning and like the flares are really strong and, and all that. And the beauty of Chinese medicine is that we can constantly meet you at wherever you happen to be at that moment. And we can change the formula to meet and address like what you need next and how to build up your body for that next part that you're going to need. So to give you an idea of um, how treatment actually looks and how it actually works out, let me give you um, a typical treatment series or how the plan would actually lay out. Um, the first thing you would do is come in, or at least working with me, um, you would come in and have an initial um, intake where we spend a lot of time like really talking about all the contributing factors that have led to your particular presentation of TSW or RSS or eczema or whatever your skin disease happens to be. And from that, I get a really good picture of where you've been, uh, where you're most likely gonna go. And then I can also figure out what herbs are gonna make the best sense for you. At that point, I will put together a prescription and the prescription will go out to the pharmacy. And then the pharmacy will select all those different herbs that I have requested, and they will put them into a pressurized machine cooker. And then they put in some distilled water. And then what happens with this machine is they actually extract all the medicinal properties from these herbs. So after about three hours, um, what is left in the water is actually what becomes the medicine. So they take all the herbs out and the liquid is what's dispensed into a vacuum pack. So the entire process is sterile. There's nothing else that comes into it. Um, it's a really, really uh, scientifically oriented process. They've done so many different studies to figure out exactly what temperature um, everything needs to be at to maximize the extraction rate and things like that. And these machines are actually pretty incredible to look at. Um, but anyway, so when the um, formula is actually done, um, we dispense it into these vacuum packs and then each vacuum pack is about the size of a cell phone, I'd say, right? Um, they look kind of like those soy sauce packages that you get from a Chinese restaurant when you do takeout, um, but they're a little bigger. So they're about this big and that represents one dose. Okay, so typically um, once the pharmacy is finished making all of those herbs, they'll drop ship them to your house and then you take one dose every 12 hours. Um, the other thing that might happen is I might uh, recommend taking an herbal formula topically as well. Um, I definitely find that if we treat the skin from the outside as well as the inside, you have a better chance of healing and a faster, it typically is a faster process. Um, so typically these topicals are those extractions that I was mentioning before, um, actually mixed together with an emollient and that way you're able to apply it on your skin um, very easily. So it works really well um, nicely or nicely together. Um, for TSW and RSS, um, you typically meet with your herbalist like every couple of weeks. And again, it goes back to the fact that we want to make sure that we are keeping up with all of the changing needs of your skin as well as your system. And we want to make sure that um, we're always doing what you need for that next thing and always anticipating where your body's going to be going. Um, so if you're taking other therapies like Dupixent or, you know, steroids or antibiotics or anything like that, that is fine. Um, what I typically do with patients is I talk to them 
about the pros and cons of either weaning off over time or um, doing a cold turkey kind of thing. And depending on whatever you feel comfortable doing, um, we can move forward any way you want. So if you want to wean off slowly, of course, we would bring in your doctor and we'd work together with them. Um, if you wanted to go to cold turkey, then you would just work with me. Um, so we can do anything, um, work anyway. And it, the treatment style would be a little bit different only because in some cases, like we're gonna have to do a lot more anticipation of where you're probably gonna be. Cause like for the example of um, Dupixent, um, you know, we're, you don't really have symptoms right now, but if you get off of it, you probably will start to have them, right? So we need to like kind of think about, you know, where are you probably gonna be? And we treat that instead of where you're at right now. Um, in the case of cold turkey, you will probably have um, symptoms right away, and then we just deal with those symptoms and then we move forward from there. So you can work with anything that, um, anything that you present to me, we can work with. Um, so most people at this point in time ask me, well, Olivia, so how long does this take? <laughs> um, and that's uh, not an easy question to answer. Um, I would say that everybody is completely different. And I think it all goes back to that analogy that I made earlier about the fire and the pot and the water. Um, it really depends on how much fire has been going on all this time. How intense has it been? Um, for how much damage has it done to the pot? How many of the fluids have been um, evaporated and gone and how much of it needs to be replenished? You know, again, going back to your constitution, you know, are you somebody who's been going through this for a long time and you're probably weakened? Or are you somebody who like just had it happen and you're probably pretty strong? I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> that's weird. Um, so anyway, um, so it really depends on the person. It really depends on their sensitivities. I know that there's some people who have allergies as well. So we take into account those kinds of things and we wanna make sure that those um, ingredients are not in the formulas and stuff. And so it really depends. Um, I will say that you typically will see um, some kind of change all along the way. Um, some changes are a little bit more subtle and some are a little bit more profound. Um, but I do think that people typically are much more motivated to keep going um, when they see these things happen. Um, so that's usually how people kind of stay in the game. Um, so just to give you an idea of like how people can progress, I um, actually have a few pictures to show you. Kelly was nice enough to share um, a lot of the pictures that she had um, that we've been taking all along because I typically take pictures of all my patients so that we can kind of track progress and then we can kind of see like how things are changing. And especially with my video conferencing um, patients who, you know, I don't get to see them in person. They typically send me the pictures and that's the best way for me to be able to assess like where things are at. So um, the pictures that I have kind of show um, how the progress has been with Kelly. Um, I think, um, let me see if I can get these up. Hold on one second. Okay, hold on with me one second. Huh, this is a little different than. Do you have the share? Yeah, I have it. I just have to change a couple things. Here we go. Coming. Okay. All right, so here's a picture of Kelly when she first started out with me. As you can see, the RSS was a lot more apparent here. It's really, really red and um, you know, clearly very uncomfortable. And then like, this is what she looks like now. I mean, you can see that the color of her skin has really changed quite a bit. One of the things that um, this picture does not show is some of the changes that happened that were not related to the skin. Um, as I mentioned before about um, emotions and things like that, I think Kelly, you can even jump in if you want to, um, she had mentioned to me when she first started coming to me that like she wasn't getting much sleep at all. She was up all night itching, very uncomfortable, whatnot. And shortly after um, she started treatment, um, she was able to sleep through the night. And so I think, you know, that's a huge win for most people because 
as you all know, I mean, you life is so much better when you can get a good night's sleep, right? And it's also so helpful for your healing system. And so, I mean, I think that was great. Um, the next picture shows Kelly's back and you can really see like the big change in her skin. Like you see all these different folds that she used to have here, you know, that sort of like elephant skin kind of thing. Um, you know, the texture of the skin here looks incredibly coarse. You know, she's still incredibly red here. And, you know, this is what she looks like today. You can see there's a huge difference in the amount of um, elasticity that's in her skin here. You know, a lot of the collagen has been rebuilt and a lot of the um, regular texture is better. And what's interesting here is I don't even think she has her arms all the way up at her, her um, head. And so this is already so folded without her going all the way up. And as you can see here, like her fingers are already here. So she's at her highest point and she doesn't even have nearly as many folds there. So then here's a picture of the inner crook of her arm. Um, what often happens with eczema and also TSW is it, there's so much swelling that goes on in the area. And then there's all these really deep demarcated lines that happen. And as you can see, the more you itch and you can see like she scratched a lot here, um, the more you itch, like the worse this kind of gets. And then this is what it looks like now. So, I mean, she has a lot more of the regular texture back. You know, the color looks better. It looks a lot more subtle. And then here's another picture of what her wrists look like. I mean, you can tell she was itching a lot here. You see all the redness. You see like she broke skin here. And then you can see how it's closing up here. And um, the lines are definitely not as thick as they used to be. So that's basically um, the story of TCM and how we treat um, RSS and TSW. If you guys have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to know more about, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Do you guys want to come up? Do you want to come up, Rochelle, and talk to her? Okay. Three and a half months. And what I told myself, because, you know, I've heard so many stories about TCM going awry like oh I tried it it worked for a, a month or a week and then I went right back to where I was or you know we've heard about doctors giving creams that actually had steroids in them um, even though they were undisclosed and then people got set back into their treatment or their their healing um, so I was really apprehensive about trying something like that although I would prefer to do something more natural like herbs than to take another pharmaceutical just because, you know, we all have an aversion to that <laughs> because of what has happened with our bodies. So um, I told myself, I'm going to give it two months and see what happens um, because it's kind of a financial commitment too, right? Because insurance doesn't cover this either. And I had seen so much progress within that two months that I, I said, I'm just going to keep going with this because you saw my back. It had been, I mean, that was to the point I had gotten to there after six years so my upper body was still giving me a lot of trouble. My, it was like I was healing from the bottom up, but up there it had been red and swollen like that forever. And I was just sick of it, you know? I'm like, if there's something I can do that'll give me the extra push, I'm willing to give it a try. And so, I mean, that picture to me, and that's what I show everyone. So I'm like, that is a massive change for me. Like the, the swelling, sleeping through the night, because I, I would wake up like once or twice and I'd sit there itching for at least a half hour. And now I, I fall asleep and I wake up at seven in the morning, which is like, oh, is she, can you grab it for me? Um, so yeah. That's... Yeah, one thing I wanted to address that you brought up, Kelly, um, I think lots of people kind of look at Chinese medicine as like, um, you know, anybody who does Chinese medicine is like the right person to go to. And that's definitely not really the right uh, way to approach it. Um, just like Western medicine, you have, you know, your general practitioner, and then you have your dermatologist, and you probably wouldn't want to go to your general practitioner with something like, you know, a more serious dermatology issue, you'd want to go to your dermatologist, right? Um, the same goes for um, TCM. There are a lot of people who practice general TCM, and they can probably help you to a certain point, but somebody who has actually um, done the additional study 
and done the two year, you know, diploma program in dermatology is much more um, trained to be able to help you with your skin. So I would just put that out there that if you're looking for somebody to deal specifically with your skin, don't just go to any um, person who does TCM, you know, go to somebody who actually has that specific diploma and is actually part of that registry. Um, just to give you a little background on the registry, um, in order to be on the registry, you have to not only take that diploma class, um, which goes for like two years, um, but you actually have to pass this five hour exam. And if you pass it, then you get your name on this registry. And today, I think worldwide, there's only 200 of us who made that list. There's a lot of people who don't even make it because they failed the exam. So those are the people who are like the best at um, doing this kind of medicine. Um, and so those are the people that I would recommend as a first choice. Do you want to come up and ask us? Hi. Hi. I'm Stephanie. Um, Hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much for presenting today. Um, I just have a question. Uh, my daughter has been taking traditional Chinese med medicinal herbs um, for a couple of months, and we tried this um, a couple of years ago as well, and we took them for, you know, I don't know, probably two months, and then I just really couldn't afford, I mean, her skin got so much better, and but I just couldn't afford to continue the herbal bath treatment, the topical skin spray, and also the, the oral medication as well. I mean, it was a tremendous expense, um, and of course, you know, all out of pocket. So after her skin got well, I was like, well, hey, maybe we can just discontinue these now because her skin looks perfect. But of course, you know, two weeks after discontinuing, her skin just rebounded back to where it used to be. So my question is, how long does a person need to stay uh, using these herbs before they can discontinue them? Or is it just a lifelong Process. No, it's not lifelong for sure. Um, the whole goal of Chinese medicine is to get your, your body to a place where it's actually functioning the way it's supposed to. And then when you're at that place, your system should be stable, your skin should be stable, and then you shouldn't need anything, not even Chinese medicine. So what's probably happening with your daughter is that you're getting to a place where she looks great on the surface but there's probably stiff stuff that's going on underneath that still hasn't completely changed yet or hasn't gotten to the point where it's 100%. Maybe. So I would say lots of times this is a struggle with my own patients because they'll look at themselves and they'll say, hey, I look awesome. Like, can we stop? Like, this has really gotten, you know, gone to the point where we don't need to do this anymore. And I'm like, no, um, I think you need to go a couple more weeks. You know, please go a couple more weeks. And they're like, no, that's okay. I think I'm good. And then I go, all right, well, if you want to go off, you can go off. And then sure enough, they go off. And a couple of weeks later, they call me up and they're like, Olivia, you were right. Okay, I'm back. Um, so think of it this way. Um, I like to use the analogy of like a room, okay? So if you're building a, a, not a room, a house. If you're building a house, lots of times like you're putting up, you know, the two by fours and you're trying to figure out how to put the wall up. But the wall still has like a lot of different, you know, places where air is going through and you can see right through it, whatever. And until you put up the drywall, until you start putting in the insulation, and then you have all the electrical wiring in place, the, the, the house is not ready to be lived in, right? So what happens a lot of times when I'm treating people is like, we get the initial wall up, some of the, um, the drywall is up, but like the electrical stuff has not gone in yet, you know, and that's the stuff most people can't see. And so until that happens, your skin is not completely fully functioning. And until that point, anything can come in, anything can trigger it and whatnot, and you're still vulnerable. So to answer your question, you probably just need it to go a little bit longer. Um, yes, it is a definite out-of-pocket cost that's significant sometimes, and I totally hear you on that. Um, one thing that you can do is you can put it on a health savings account and you can also use the flexible spending account for any appointment as well as the herbs. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is like, this is something that you're gonna be investing in for a short period of time. 
okay? Because the goal is to get you to a point where you no longer need anything, which is what is my situation, um, you're putting in the money now to actually fix the whole system. And once it's fixed, you shouldn't have to do anything anymore. So like when I went, um, I probably went for three, four months and then, you know, my skin was pretty clear. And then I think I went for another couple months just to like make sure that everything was fine. And while that may have been expensive during those six months, we're now talking about several, 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 several years and probably the rest of my life where I'm never going to have to use medicine again. And if you add up all that stuff, then, you know, I think like the investment is definitely worth it. I mean, I was on so much medication before that, I mean, it was costing me a lot of money anyway. Well, what, that's my thing. I don't mind spending $300, $400 a month as long as I know it's not going to be like for a lifetime. Right. You know, I was concerned about it. I'm like, well, we did this for two months. Her skin was perfect. So we quit. And now she's back to square one. But maybe if we do it for six months, you know, if her if she gets back to where she was, then maybe we'll be good. And I don't yeah. really mind that expense, like you said, as long as it's not something that lasts forever. So, but thank you so much. I really appreciate you answering my question. Yeah, you're welcome. No problem. Hi, I'm Molly. Hi, how are you? Good. Thank you for presenting to us. I am curious. Um, is this the same thing or or are you familiar with undas i'm sorry it's called undas they're like little bottles i had a naturopathic doctor that was working with me with those as well they're like numbered and you have to do a certain number of series and they're like oh i think those are really different yeah i think it's a completely different thing um what i usually prescribe are these um, vacuum packs they're probably like the size of my phone um and they're a liquid formula um and they're not numbered um, because they're gonna change every single time I see you. So it's not like I, I, I load you up with like a whole six month supply. You know, I literally give you enough to get you through the next two weeks and then we meet again and then we figure out, you know, should we change out the formula? Should we add stuff? Got it. Should we take stuff out? And then we, you know, make another one. So I think it's a very different thing. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, I think we're good, Olivia. Thank you so much. That was great hearing from you and. You're welcome. Well, you know, I just wanted to let people know that if they're interested in talking about their individual case, um, I'm more than happy to talk to people and help them, you know, understand like what they can do with it. Um, all they have to do is send me an email and, um, you know, just let me know that we met through this particular um, venue and that, um, you know, I can set aside some time and talk to people. So I actually have a, uh, a sheet that I can show you. Hold on. So here's my information. Um, if anybody, if anybody's interested in sending me an email and just wants to get more information, or if you know, you're in outside of the United States and you're looking for somebody to treat you in another country, I can get you um, the name of somebody on the registry. Um, and then, you know, if you are looking for any other resources and just want to better understand like what else is out there and what can help you, I'd be more than happy to, you know, answer any other questions. All right. Wonderful. Thanks. All right. So yeah. Have a great weekend. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great meeting all of you guys. And um, I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye.